Hello, hello, and welcome to the newest video from Rise of Cultures on my channel. In this video, I will make a deep review of my 5 most favorite features of the game and I will share with you some of my insights on how I perceive the core features of such a strategy city builder have changed over the years and how they have evolved since they were originally founded by the other games we might know from InnoGames. This is a sponsored video and you can find the link for downloading Rise of Cultures in the description below. Rise of Cultures is free to download and free to play for Android and iOS and you can use the link below to start exploring the mankind's history today. Also make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with the regular content from Rise of Cultures. Now without further ado, let's dive into my 5 favorite features in Rise of Cultures. The number one, cultural system of the city. Building your city in Rise of Cultures draws you into much more than just expressing the ancient cultures and civilizations from the past. Each era goes with its own requirements to meet, resources to produce and tasks to complete, but you are also facing a challenge to build your city efficiently and manage the layout so that you get the most out of your space possible. This is where the cultural system comes into play but this time with a special twist compared with the previous games by InnoGames. No such thing as a global culture exists, but instead you distribute the cultural buildings throughout your city in such a way that each provides local cultural boost for the buildings you place around. With your progress in the research, you are unlocking new upgrades or even brand new cultural buildings and you are regularly rebuilding your city and getting the most out of each setup of buildings you have at your disposal. Separating cultural buildings into one corner of the city is not efficient in Rise of Cultures, as instead you are making your city living with many monumental sculptures and historical rarities placed just as a breathing part of your city. And that's the sort of dynamics I like about Rise of Cultures. It just makes your city feel alive. The number two, workers. Talking about a very similar aspect as with a culture, the population system goes much beyond just building your homes and accommodating your people. In Rise of Cultures, we are having the so-called workers that you are constantly interacting with during your gameplay even after you build their homes. They are a living part of your city, you can watch them walking in the streets and follow how they are working on your tasks. And yes, you heard that right, once you get a new worker to your city, a new strategy aspect of the game comes into play you are supposed to find the best way of distributing your workers throughout many productions running in your city. You can either assign them to produce food in your farms, goods in your workshops, help train units in your military buildings, or you may even need to temporarily cancel your productions if you need some workers for performing upgrades in your city to further advance within your current era. It's all about how well you can manage your available houses, homes and people that are living in your city. The number 3. Upgrading your buildings In Rise of Cultures, we can see a sort of combination of previous two approaches that we could see in previous two InnoGames titles, where the first one presented a constant need of placing and destroying buildings as you were approaching new eras, so in each following era you got a new building that you replaced your previous buildings by, and the opposite approach which included placing the building once, and only upgrading it as you were getting through the following chapters of the game. In Rise of Cultures we see a sort of combination of these two approaches as we are able to upgrade our buildings into higher levels, but sometimes we also get a brand new building to place which might even replace the previous building of the type. Let's take an example of the Byzantine era where we are given brand new types of workshops which fully replace the workshops we built during the eras before. What I like about this game property is that we have a fully working system to upgrade our buildings, so we don't need additional space every time we are improving the city, but we can also see a lot of potential in the future updates as they are always capable of bringing a brand new buildings to the game, which is of course much appreciated by me as a player, as this way I always have something new to walk to. The number 4, a modern way of building a city. Rise of Cultures aims to be a next generation simulation city building game, which is nicely reflected in the ways we can handle our city, place the buildings and recreate our layout. This all comes with several innovations that come with Rise of Cultures. 
As an example, we can mention the stash feature, which is now fully implemented as the core feature of the game and allows players to temporarily store buildings from the city to provide additional space once they are recreating their city and looking for a new layout. Another great innovation is the so-called automatic roads feature, thanks to which we no longer need to bother with a bunch of small one by one blocks moving around the city, but instead the roads are always generated automatically to visually connect our buildings, while they always advance together with our progress in the research. And the number 5, which is not a feature, but it's rather my subjective point of view for that beyond the words spirit of the game, following the player during his entire gaming experience. Starting in the dawn of the stone age, forming your tribe in the middle of the hills, surrounded by a cold, summer evening-like atmosphere, tuned with the moving clouds in the sky and wild boars peeking out of the surrounding plains, all completed with the unique and memorable music playing in the background. Soon approaching the first ancient culture and discovering the rituals of the people walking in the dry streets, hiding from the never-ending sunshines in the shadows of the deep houses and exploring the last sources of water from the local palm wells and the Nile River flowing nearby. All of this is adding value to the amazing spirit of the game. And with that being said, this is my collection of 5 favorite features of Rise of Cultures. What is your favorite part of the game? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section below and don't forget that you can use the link in the description of this video to download Rise of Cultures right now. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.